The Unshackled Waves, Episode 65. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms and I'm back for another In Focus show. Now a reminder about how this format works is we bring in an expert on a topic so we can learn a bit more uh, about it and and hopefully implement some of that in either politics or in our real lives. So our guest for today is Nicola Wright. She's a homeschooling parent of two from Perth. She works in digital communications. She's a writer for our friends at Liberty Works and also a contributor to The Spectator Australia. She gave a presentation on homeschooling at the recent Friedman Conference in Sydney. So I was curious to know a bit more about homeschooling. So I thought I'd invite her on today to discuss it further. So Nicola, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tim. I guess I'll start with the or main question, uh, why homeschooling? Well, that's the big question. Um, basically, I've been homeschooling since 2008, so it's been quite a while. I guess that qualifies me as an expert. <laughs> um, so we started in 2008 um, when my eldest son was at pre-primary and he'd been in kindy for a year. He did a whole year at kindy, no problems. He wasn't having any problems at school. Um, But when he got to pre-primary, he was uh, four years old going on five. And at pre-primary, they do Monday to Friday and they do a whole day. Um, And so I was helping out in the class a bit and just the things I was seeing, like they have little kids kind of doing an activity and they just get immersed in it and then they have to pack up and part of my helping was to kind of stop them from doing what they were doing. They could all pack up and then they'd be shuffled off to <clears throat> the next activity. And I guess that kind of just made me think, oh, this is not really ideal, this isn't 100%. And he wasn't even at a local state school or anything, he was actually at a school we were paying quite a bit of money for. Um, And I guess I just got a sense that it was just too much at such a young age. Um, And also they kind of tended to, you know, the parents have to kind of help out doing this and that. And and it's almost like the school becomes a part of your life. It almost kind of takes over um, a family's life. That's the feeling anyway. Um, And so we had friends who were homeschooling. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have thought of it. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, maybe he doesn't really need all this at this age. Um, So I think the overwhelming first reason was um, for freedom, um, that we didn't need to be part of this kind of really hectic schedule of jumping up in the morning at four years old, rushing off to school and staying there all day. And um, and he kind of had, you know, stress, a little bit of stress about it. And we could have worked through it, but anyway. Um, I just thought, no, we've got an option. And when I knew we had an option, I thought, let's just see how we go for a little while. So I pulled him out in the first term um, and that's where our whole homeschooling journey started. Um, And he's got a little brother, so we just kept going. And each year things were going well and so we just kept doing it. The second reason sort of came after a while, after they started getting a bit older, And it was that realisation that we don't actually need, we didn't need teachers or a school or whatever to tell us what we needed to know, what they needed to learn. And, you know, so we're talking 2008. So, um, you know, the internet has got everything there. Um, Anything we need to know, we can look up. If I don't know it, we can find it. And it was almost that feeling that why do we even need an education department to tell me what my kids need to know? So I guess that's kind of like a rebellious sort of aspect to it. It's almost like I don't need someone else to tell me what my kids need to know. And now when I reflect on my uh, schooling uh, many years ago, it it, it is a very controlled 
in environment. Um, you're, you're told at 9 a.m. you have to do this, uh, then 11, 11 a.m. It, it's this, and it, it's very in, instructional, and it's very, I, I, I guess, a strict uh, in, environment. I mean, the, the children are, are not allowed, legally not allowed to, to leave at any time. Um, I'm, I'm also curious because there's a lot of... Uh, uh, libertarians who are some of the more hardcore ones they refer to schools as day prisons because you know you're you're taught how to be or you're told to be really like strict discipline and, and also they refer to it as a government indoctrination center that children are indoctrinated to what the government thinks is important and what will serve them rather than serve the children. I mean, is that something that uh, uh, comes into your reasoning? Yep, that's all part of it, for sure, definitely. Um, I don't know whether you've heard of um, John Taylor Gatto. Yes. Um, but yeah, he's written extensively. It pertains to America, but I think the same could be said for here as well. It's like, why? what is the purpose of, of, of schooling, um, compulsory schooling? And, um, I mean, without putting my tinfoil hat on, I mean, it's not so much a conspiracy theory. I think it's just like a massive kind of bureaucracy and... Um, you're stuck in it and you're just told what to think and, um, yeah, so well, luckily it's legal to homeschool in Australia so you do have that option to kind of step out of that. Um, and, yeah, definitely, that's definitely part of it. Yes, because it's not legal in all countries. For example, Germany, it's illegal to uh, homeschool your child. So it's 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 not as simple as uh, a lot of people think. That's right. Now, I'm curious to know, what's the, the typical day for a homeschooling parent? I mean, obviously, school has a timetable. I mean, yeah, have classes in the morning, set time for recess uh, and lunch. So it's very structured. But how do, how do your yeah. days go? And uh, what, uh, what are sort of the activities your, your children would uh, do on uh, what would be termed a school day? Okay. Well... Um, obviously this has changed over the years. Um, so when they were younger it was a lot different to what it's like now. Um, but it's hard to kind of say a typical day. It's probably more accurate to say what would a typical week look like because every day is different. Um, so And also it depends on, on the type of homeschooling you do. So we're very kind of laissez-faire, almost unschooling. Um, so there's not a great deal of structure, um, especially in the early days. We wouldn't have a school day. So life just kind of carries on weekend, weekdays, and they would come along with me and do everything I had to do. Um, so we have kind of like homeschool co-ops, so we have a lot of other friends who homeschool. So a typical week would involve meeting up with them a couple of times a week. Um, um, sometimes we would sit down and do some kind of schooly activities. So I've been doing maths with my kids because I think maths is something that I'm not willing to just leave um, to chance. But there are homeschoolers who do do that. They completely unschool everything. Um, but I've always wanted to sit down and do a little bit of maths with them. So that's something we've always kind of done. Um, probably not every day, most days. Um, so I'll give you a picture of what, what it looks like right now. So I've got a 14-year-old and an 11-year-old. Um, and my 14-year-old has actually just started at a community school. Um, and we can talk about that in a minute, about the reasons why. Um, so I've only got my 11-year-old son with me at the moment. Um, so a typical day will be we get up, we get Campbell ready, we take Campbell to school. We come back and we'll sit down together and do something out of, say, a maths curriculum, something that we're working through together, um, or perhaps some um, writing practice, um, whatever's kind of on my agenda for him to do. Um, so that would probably only go for about half an hour or 45 minutes. Um, so on a day where I'm working, then I'll go and start doing my work at my desk and he'll just go and occupy himself with uh, whatever he's got going on at the moment, 
he likes to make things. So he has like projects he's doing and he builds things and he's a very hands-on type of dude. Um, that's the thing I wanted to say before about kids who have been homeschooled kind of for a great number of years seem to be able to occupy themselves really well because I think they're used to not being told what to do every minute of the day so they're not shuffled. That's, that's how we do it anyway. Obviously there are some homeschoolers who have a really structured like school at home environment so that's, a, I can't speak for them. Um, but I do know that my kids and all the other homeschool kids I know are really good at occupying themselves. So it's not often they'll be bored or, well they are sometimes, but um, they're just used to filling their days. So then we might, you know, other days we might have to go out. I like to dedicate one day with him where we might go out and do an excursion or get on the train or go to the zoo or catch up with friends, go ice skating. It's actually a lifestyle, so um, it's not really school at home. Um, so yeah, afternoon we pick my eldest son up and and then they just hang out and chill. Uh, when you think about it, there's a lot of uh, mm. learning that children engage in, which is at their own initiative. Uh, for example, if mm. they, if they want to know curious about dinosaurs they'll go and look up everything themselves i mean why do you need to wait for them to be in a classroom with a teacher to teach them about dinosaurs exactly. why can't they just go and uh, get the information as well and you mentioned uh, f uh field trips or excursions uh, they have you can take them to, for example, the museum any day and get the same educational value as if they were in a school school trip. Exactly, totally. And also we have the freedom to follow the interests if we're at the museum. He doesn't have to whip out his... Remember that at school when you'd have to go on an excursion and you'd have like a clipboard and you'd have to answer all these questions while you were there and it just totally wrecked the whole thing. <laughs> well, we did at school anyway and I used to hate that. Um, so we can follow their interests, you know, any questions he has, um, I'm right there and um, we can look stuff up. Um, but yeah, like you say, kids tend to get um, interested in a topic and they just go to immersion, they just become obsessed with this one topic and um, if, if it's dinosaurs, my older son was into it, so they read everything about it, they watch videos about it, you know, the toys they make, they draw it, it's just like a a theme that they've just, you know, made up themselves. And that's where I think, and I totally believe this, that's where you learn the most. And even as an adult, I do that as well. You can certainly cut out the, as it's called, busy work. There's, there's certainly some activities that are done in classrooms, which there really isn't any educational value apart from just filling the time. Yeah. Well, they say that, you know, you can do a whole week of primary school in two hours. And that's how it is. It really, really is. It's, it's, we spend most of our time living life and you're learning while you're doing that as well, even if you're going shopping or cooking or gardening or whatever he's doing with me, he's learning. And then we have our little bit where we sit down and do something a bit more formal, but that's all you really need to do. It's not hard. It's not hard. Some people say, how can you homeschool that? You know, isn't that hard for you? And, you know, sometimes it's hard when you don't get the personal space. Um, but you can, there's things you can do. So I had a friend and the kids were best friends and we used to, like I would have her kids for an afternoon and she would have mine and we'd make space that way, which is more important when they're younger. But as, they're, as they get older, I don't need that so much because they occupy themselves so well. So let's move on to some of the objections people have to, to homeschooling. And obviously uh, yep. professional teachers, they don't like the idea that there's uh, parents who feel that they're capable of doing their job, which they've, they've studied year, years at university to do. But uh, one of the, the main objections is, or a stereotype, I should probably say, is that homeschooling is for religious fundamentalists who can teach their children anything. They can teach them that the world was created in seven days and that the earth is only uh, 6,000 years old. Uh, uh, how do you handle those objections? Well, I will say that most homeschoolers probably don't fall into that category. 
but I do recognise that that can be a problem and I don't really have an answer for that. Um, you know, there are, I mean, I have known of a couple of kids who have been homeschooled by a religious fundamentalist and have, they've run into a bit of trouble with being isolated. Um, and they, I guess there is an element of brainwashing, which is unfortunate, and um, but there are checks and balances in place. Um, to, I guess the moderators are there to, what they call the people from the education department that come and check on us are called moderators in Western Australia, they are anyway. Um, so they come once a year. Um, and I guess they're trained to look out for that sort of thing. But, um, you know, it's also a free world and if people want to bring their children up in that way, um, then they really do have the right to do that as long as they're not abusing or hurting those children. Um, but overwhelmingly, most of the homeschool schooling families I've met aren't like that at all. I mean, they, they are Christian ones, but they're not of that ilk. Um, the fundamentalist types, the cliche that you, you brought up. Um, I think most homeschooling parents are doing it consciously and they're doing it for a reason and they're unlikely to be neglecting their children because they've actually made this choice, which is actually a tough choice, not to send your kids to school. So if you've gone so far as to make that choice, um, then I believe that you've got your kids' best interests at heart and you're going to do as good a job as you can. And uh, yeah. another objection that um, people have is, and this is what I mentioned before about uh, teachers who don't like the idea of homeschooling, is they believe that parents mm -hmm. uh, don't have the skills, they haven't uh, done the the qualifications in the the mm -hmm. subjects or all the all the behavioural courses. So, um, uh, what uh, what's your response to that? Yeah. Well, I would say a teacher's job is completely different to a parent who, who's homeschooling because they've got that whole class management thing that we don't have to even deal with. So I think a lot of their training, and I don't know for sure, <laughs> is based on how do you manage 30 kids at once. We are all at different levels and I think, man, I take my hats off to them because I could never do that. It would drive me insane. Um, <laughs> so it's much easier to deal with one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one or even three-on-one children that you know really well and you know what they do and don't know. Um, so I don't think you need any special qualifications for that. You don't need qualifications for, you know, teaching a child how to walk or talk. I mean, we trust parents to do that. That's incredible development and learning a baby up to a school-age child that the parents have, have done, well, the child's done it, but the parents have looked after and nurtured their children and they've still learned to talk and walk and you don't need to be taught how to do that. Um, so my style of homeschooling is just a continuation of that. And if I don't know something, I will find out. And I think you're modelling that for your kids. Um, you know, if you don't know something, you work out how to do it. You'll do anything you can. Um, to find out an answer, and I think that's all. You, that's the main skill you need in life, isn't it? Truly, um, yeah. Uh, the art of uh, parenting, it's it's something that, yeah, p people who have children, they, they learn naturally, um, uh, oh, m most of them do. So, yeah, as you mentioned, it's mm -hmm. an extension of that. And in terms of having the, the knowledge to, to teach the, the child, I've heard stories of uh, teachers who they're, they're told that they're teaching this subject which they're not trained in at all and so they're, as the saying goes, just staying one lesson ahead of the, the children. And so if, mm. if, that, if that's what they're doing, then certainly that's something a parent is capable of as well if, if they don't know much about well, maths, for example. They can just uh, look that up and obviously uh, they've got an, uh, an adult mind so they can probably master the subject uh, more easily. They can mm. relay that to, to the child within a short space of time. Yeah. So doing this math, I do a life of Fred, it's called Life of Fred Maths Curriculum. And I did that with both the boys. And doing, you know, reading through that is just, you know, I've been learning stuff as well and remembering all the stuff I learned in primary school that I forgot and 
And it was really interesting and so you're kind of doing it together. Um, and I will say though that, you know, you don't have to do it all yourself either. There's there's classes. Um, my kids have done quite a few different classes with other facilitators, science classes, um, English, um, like an essay writing class from a dedicated lady. Um, we just pick and choose. So I'm more a facilitator than a teacher. I'm definitely not a teacher. I could never be a teacher. So, you know, what they're doing is completely different, really, to what a homeschooling parent is doing. And, and probably the internet has revolutionised uh, homeschooling as well because there's the, uh, uh, the world's knowledge basically at the at the click of a, a button. And uh, if, if, you exactly. don't, if you don't know something, you can, as the saying goes, just Google it. And uh, I'll say this again, I, exactly. have, heard, I have heard stories of teachers telling their students, I don't know the answer to it, Google it. Yeah, totally. I mean, my son was at school the other day and a girl next to him was asking, it was like a teacher's assistant there, asked the teacher's assistant a question and she answered it and he had to say, um, actually, no, that's wrong and pointed it out in the book that, it, you know, it was hilarious actually. But I said to him, lucky you went to school, otherwise that girl would never have known the right answer. It's just crazy. But, you know, teachers are human beings. We're all human beings. Everyone makes mistakes. But the internet has just opened up the world to everybody. And I think in the future, schools are not going to be, well, I hope that they will not resemble what, what they are now. We don't need gatekeepers to knowledge. And I think the most important thing you can teach your kids is discernment. You know, they can read anything now. So... You know, they're just, they're, the skill they need is to work out who's saying what, why are they saying it, and can I trust this source? And I think if they know that, nothing can stop them. Oh, well, uh, the internet is, it's destroying all the, the gatekeepers, not just in schooling, but in all other occupations mm. as well. And as you, as you said, uh, as parents, you're not alone. There's all different uh, pro uh, programs to assist you, and obviously, uh, uh, famous uh, libertarian presidential candidate Ron Paul created his his own uh, homeschool curriculum, the the Ron Paul curriculum. So there, there's mm. plenty, plenty of uh, mater material out there to assist you. And if you do do feel that your children need more structure, then uh, there's that for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's choices out there. Um, and you can start a curriculum like that and you can pick and choose or you can do it for a year and it doesn't suit you or, you know, I've been very eclectic in my approach and just really kind of tried things, dabbled, grabbed things at work. Um, but really, we're mostly unstructured and, and that suits us. Now, another objection is that... Uh children who are homeschooled, they don't get to socialise. So when they get out of the real world, they, they don't have the same social skills <laughs> as uh, as pe uh, people who've gone to school. And it's, they're, they're, the people who are in favour of school and they describe school as a melting pot where you've gained all these uh, social skills. So uh, how, how, does, how do you overcome that uh, at, at a homeschooling environment? Mm. Well, in a homeschooling environment, we there are so many other people doing it. So there's so many groups, even just in Perth. So we could see people every single day or day if we wanted to. Um, we don't because basically my kids have always had enough. A couple of days a week of hanging out with their friends has been enough, but that might just be our personality types. Um, but what you said before about... Um, kids not being ready for the real world, I would argue that it's the opposite. I mean, kids in schools are locked away from the real world. The homeschoolers are in the real world. They're the ones going out with their parents and doing things, interacting with people of all ages. I don't know whether you've ever met any homeschooled kids, but most of them are so good with talking with adults. They're just comfortable and relaxed. And, um, oh, I've met a whole group and with kids at the freshman conference. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's almost a cliche just how kind of confident they are socially. Um, so I would argue that putting kids in schools and putting them in groups where they're all the same 
age, like 30, 10 year olds or whatever, is a recipe for disaster. Um, I would say I don't want the socialisation that, that schools offer. Um, so, you know, you have bullying and survival of the fittest and it's just, to me, it's unnatural. I mean, all through human history, kids have been, I mean, even in, I think of like the small towns, the small village school where you've got all the great, all the ages together in a schoolroom, that's more natural than what we've got now. You know, where our local primary school has got 600 children and masses of kids all the same age kind of lump together. I don't think that's healthy. It's interesting that you say that because that, that uh, homeschooling actually prepares children better for the real world because in a homeschooling environment there's more initiative while at school you're t uh, the students are told you know what to do all the time we're out in the well, especially in the modern world you've sort of got to take the mm -hmm. the initiative and uh, and try and achieve in life uh, based on based on your own initiative. Mm. Well, that's if you're doing homeschooling in that way. Um, I remember Topher Field saying at, at the Freeman Conference that, you know, if you're doing homeschooling well, if you're opening up your child's world, but you're doing it bad if you're shutting it down. So, you know, if your idea of homeschooling is keeping your kids home all the time and you're just trying to do school at home at the kitchen table, then I would argue that that's not really preparing them that well for life. If you're micromanaging their day, you do this and we do that and they don't have any control, then they may as well be at school. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, they learn that skill of working out what they need to do to achieve something. So if they want to do something, then they, they have to work out how they're going to get there. And I think that's definitely a life skill. And as you've uh, said all throughout the show, you're, you're not alone and there's other uh, parents who are homeschooling their children as well and you can uh, arrange uh, uh, a meet-up a meet and there, there's also, there's uh, it still hasn't uh, gone out of fashion, the, the play group, you can still, uh, groups of parents yeah. can congregate together and their children can play together. So yeah, just because they're, yeah. they're not at a school doesn't mean other forms of social events can't take place. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes there's too much and you think, oh, God, we've got to back off. We've been hanging out around with other people too much this week. You know, we need a quite chill. And you have the power to decide whether you're going to have a quite chill week or, or not, depending on how your kid's going. It's totally flexible. That's what I love about it. It's just like a freedom. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of uh, parents who would love to homeschool, and I know uh, a lot of libertarians are especially fond of the idea, but feel that they, they can't do it because, well, they, they've got to make sure they're earning a, a wage, and, and so if they're mm -hmm. at work during the day, then um, they, they can't uh, homeschool, homeschool their children during the day. So. Uh, how, what's the best way to overcome these chal challenges so that more people have mm. the uh, re resources and time to do it? Well, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, I've been lucky enough to be able to work from home. Um, so um, I purposely did a, a degree that would help me to do that and I started doing that when my son was one. Um, and so there's a lot you can do from home now. So I actually do half-time hours. Um, luckily for me, I have the opportunity. And also if you have a partner, um, then you can juggle. So I don't have a, an answer uh, for somebody, maybe a single mum who's struggling. Um, it's tricky, it's hard. I always think of it as homeschooling is like the most expensive private school you can imagine because you're giving up a one whole full-time wage for whatever parent, whichever parent decides. Or, you know, if both parents work half-time or part-time. Um, but I think it's important enough to try and make it work any way you can, um, especially if lots of homeschoolers' kids have struggled in school. So it's not they're not homeschooling 
philosophically they're homeschooling out of necessity because their kid has just been traumatized or bullied or and they have to do it they just have to do it for their kids sake um and i guess it's, it's a massive sacrifice but i think it's one that's worth making hey, hey. You do point out that you, you are a lot of the time giving up a, a salary to homeschool your children, but uh, uh, there's also the fact that a lot of private schools, they, they charge $20,000 uh, per year per student. So mm. Uh, mm. square traditional schooling it is not that cheap either. But uh, what are the actual expenses of homeschooling uh, minus the, the wages foregone. Does it work out cheaper than uh, if you sent your child to or, uh, a private school? A private school? Um, I think so. I mean, a couple of times I thought, oh, you know, I'm, I can't do this anymore because you have the, those moments. And I wouldn't just send them to any school. So I've looked at a couple of community schools and, you know, the fees are so big and then I'd, I'd have to be working full time to do it. And it's like, how is this going to help our lives, me working full time out of the house while they're going to this school and, and life just suddenly becomes so much more stressful. Um, but you, you can rack up quite a few expenses, you know, going on excursions and, um, classes so homeschooling classes can be expensive because you just you, there's no help there's no funding or anything for anything so if if um a group want to do classes or take they, they have to charge quite a bit um so it can it can be expensive but then again i'd rather do that than you know fork out forty thousand dollars and go and work full time somewhere yeah it's tricky I, yeah, and you'd also have uh, no well, supervision or guidance over uh, how your children learn, which is uh, what's really mm. important to you. So you're not you're not seeing yeah. your your children your children, and you're basically working to send them to go uh, go and be with someone else. Yeah, it's like being on the kibbutz. <laughs> Um, just going back to when my, my son was in pre-primary and we pulled him out, one of the other reasons was uh, like uh, you get to know the teachers quite well and you think, I'm handing over my little five-year-old child, you know, for six hours a day um, under your care. Like I don't even know um, what your views are and, you know, X, Y, Z or these are just like human beings, frail, you know, we all have frailties, but they've got their opinions and, and you're just handing over a small, impressionable child for most of the day. Um, it just, just seems crazy. I think it's different when they're older. Um, so, like I mentioned before, my 14-year-old is, is at school and he's only been for one term. Um, but I felt like he was lacking um, in... He's getting a bit disillusioned and a bit bored and I didn't quite have the time to facilitate stuff for him. Anyway. So we're doing this as like a voluntary situation. So if he's unhappy with it, then we won't do it anymore. But so far he is. Um, but I think at 14 years of age, he's, I think, you know, there's certain, he's solid now and there's no, he's not going to be easily swayed or manipulated or, you know, brainwashed with agendas. And it's just, com it's a completely different thing to a five or six year old, you know? Yeah. I get, I get what you mean, that it was a choice that he was able to make where for most children it's, it's their, they go to school uh, and, and that's mm. it. They, they have to go through the 12 years of schooling, no choice in the matter. While you, um, your son was homeschooled for many years, uh, uh, obviously mm. it was fulfilling for him, but at that point of his life he decided that maybe he should trial traditional schooling for some areas mm. that he thought was lacking. And I think if your teenage kid wants to try something like that and you don't let them, then I think that's wrong as well. Um, you know, they've got to find their way in life and my role is to just support him um, in any way he can. And, you know, I'm fully prepared for him to say, okay, this is not panning out. If I detect that, you know, he's just in a misery all the time and uninspired um, and, it, and he's not learning anything and it's pointless, well, then we won't do it, definitely. I wouldn't, 
both my husband and I, we just said, no, that's it. You don't, we'll, we'll do something else. Maybe, you know, look at TAFE or get a job or, you know, we're not, you know, this is not set in concrete that he goes to this school. It sounds like that uh, in a homeschooling environment, the, the children, they're, they're a lot more independent. They're given, they're given more choice, uh, treated or more, more like an adult or treated as more mature. Mm. While at school, they're just taught, you know, uh, as, the, as it used to be in the old days, children should be seen and, and not heard. There's definitely uh, tra uh, treating the, the child with a bit more respect in a, in a homeschooling setting. Mm, yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's little things that he tells me about at this school. I should say this school is um, it's called a care school. It's actually a, a government school, but it's for kids that have been struggling in normal schools. And I think so they have to kind of pull out all stops and change what they're doing. So there's loads of teachers. There's only 50 students. Um, they, you know, they can call the teachers by their first names. And it's almost like this is how school should be. Like, why wait until they're struggling before you say, oh, okay, we'll do it this way. I mean, if they did it that way for everyone, it could transform schools. Um, I'm not against schools. I just think the schools as they are right now are crap. Um, but even there, they've got some crazy little kind of silly rules. Um, when we went to have a look, she's saying that they can't have things in their lunchbox that have more than five grams of sugar. And then in front of him, she had a big laugh about how when they confiscate it, they eat it themselves. And, and you know, you just think, oh, well, this is, <laughs> like, well, how is that good? How does that make sense, you know? And then they have like a, a smoking area for the teachers and, some of the older kids, which I think is cool. I mean, I'm not against it in any way, but it just seems silly compared to the sugar rule, you know. Um, and just a few kind of ways they have to manage behaviour, so they have a system, um, you know, where they get warnings and then they get benched and and all that kind of stuff, that coercive kind of stuff. I, I'm not, I don't really love it, but I guess they have to do that when they've got 50 teenagers in one place together um but i think that's it's as good as it can kind of get if you know what i mean yeah it sounds like it's even though they, they try to make the the school setting as relaxed as possible it still uh mm. lurches into the uh, the habits of schools that we don't like yeah exactly and like the kids are lesser you know where they can snatch some sugar out of your lunch and eat it themselves and think it's funny. It's just, and my son says, God, oh, don't make a big deal about it, mum. And, you know, but we have a laugh about it. Yeah. Academically, I think, um, I'm not that worried. Like, so there's no pressure on him to have to perform well and get good grades. But if he does, it's a bonus. But if he doesn't, I'm, we're not going to be disappointed or upset because, it's not going to stop him doing what he wants to do in life in the future. I fully believe that. Now let's talk about the uh, relationship homeschoolers have with government because obviously the, the government, as with everything in our society, likes to supervise, regulate, have, have laws about it. Um, and in, in Australia, as you mentioned, it's legal, but uh, some states are trying to... Uh, introduce more stringent uh, regulations on on homes homeschooling parents, and uh, also a whole whole lot of new reporting requirements. Can you shed a bit of light on that? Mm. Mm. Really, I only know about WA, um, and I do know a little bit. I think in Victoria they're looking to reform the whole setup. I think at the moment it's quite lax in Victoria. But I think they're trying to introduce something where they have to justify why, the parents have to justify why they're homeschooling, which I think is outrageous. Um, but in WA, we see this moderator once a year. But I tell you, if we didn't have to do that, it would transform my homeschooling and I'll be so much more relaxed. The stress just comes from the moderator. So basically what they want you to do is relate everything you've done back to the Australian curriculum, which is the most ridiculous waffle document you've ever seen in your life. It's, you know, I don't think I'm dumb, but I read it and I think, I can't even understand what, you, what you're trying to say. Like what, 
it's not specific, it's just waffle, it's just education ease. Um, <clears throat> so I resent it and it actually does create some stress with me and my son sometimes. I think, well, we can't, we got to do this because otherwise, you know, the moderator's coming and blah, blah, blah. And so anything that we do that's contrived um, is only to please the education department. It's almost like they just come blundering in um, and, you know, trying to make sure that we're doing things like a school would do it when it's like Mark Hornshaw said at, at the conference, it's like why why would we want to do anything like schools? This is why we're homeschooling. You are the, you know, the competition and we reject the whole way you're doing it. We don't want to be anything like schools. So then you have to have this interview where you're trying to, you know, you have someone sitting there pouring over everything, you know, you've done and, and, I, and I just think you don't get it. You don't get what we're doing. Um, but I don't like to rock the boat too much. I just give them what they want and send them on their way. It, sounded, it sounds like it would be quite degrading for a parent to have this bureaucrat come in to make sure that you know, you're doing the, the right thing by your child, which is, you know, as, uh, as would be obvious to them, like there, there's no sign of abuse mm. or um, neglect. And mm. so uh, mm. why, why are they here other than to just... Uh, 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 tick boxes and uh, yeah, rubber stamp you. It is every year I get angry <laughs> about it and I get stressed about it. And you know, in the homeschooling community, there's lots of like great homeschooling parents who are just like putting their hair out and worrying and stressing about this visit. And you know, each moderator is so different. So, you know, you get understanding ones, you like, yeah, you know, natural learning and that's fine and, you know, you guys are doing a great job. And I had a lot of that when the kids were little and then we moved and I've had two different ones since and, oh, just like a nightmare. Um, and, you know, there's parents who actually get really upset about it and, and second guess themselves and then we all kind of encourage them and say, no, no, you're doing a great job and, and if only we didn't have to answer, it would it'd be great, it'd be fantastic. But I don't think that day will ever come, Tim. Uh, why do you think it's so uh, big, if, as we've talked about, there are these strict yeah, conditions on, on homeschooling which encourage you to be more like a school. Why is there the, uh, uh, such this, uh, I guess, I guess you'd call it uh, religious devotion to uh, traditional schooling, where, as you said, there's you know, there, there's a lot of children who don't learn at school. I mean, there's children who go through schooling without mm. even learning to, to read. The, you know, bullying is, is rife. Uh, there, there, there doesn't seem to be in in any political party. There's there's none of the major parties have ever spoken about the uh, the the wonders of homeschooling. And we're in Australian politics. Mm. We're just going through the Gonski. Uh, 2.0 debate where uh, the solution to our falling uh, falling education standards is just throwing more money at uh, traditional schools. Uh, uh, why is it so difficult to just, for everyone to stop and question, maybe we should rethink schooling? Yeah, I don't know. I think it kind of comes from maybe my parents' generation or even before that when when, you know, school or education for everyone was seen as this amazing kind of um, thing about Western civilization that's made us who we are and, and, it, and it kind of probably did. But I think when it got to the point that it was compulsory that everyone had to go to school, I think that's when the problem started. But you're right, there's this kind of like this, you know, idolization, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, school is something that everyone kind of bows down to and across the board. Um, and, you know, you see lots of conservatives sometimes talking about, um, you know, school's got to be harder and they're doing all the wiffly waffly subjects and, you know, the reason we're failing is because, you know, they're not teaching the three hours and, and that might have something to do with it, but you have to say, what, what do they mean by failing? So when they measure up all these schools to see who's performing best, they're just talking about tests, right? So, you know, like Asian countries when they're doing really well, then what are they doing? Are they just like 
rote learning all this stuff so that they pass these tests. But, but does that represent real learning or engagement or are they just doing well in a test? Um, so I think the whole conversation about schools is all messed up <laughs> all the way across the board. You know, they're throwing money at it the test scores aren't getting better and they're thinking that the test scores are some measure of how good schools are but I don't think that they are. And it's never been explained to me where all this extra funding is going to. I mean what's it actually mm. going to be uh, spent on? I have no clue. I have no no clue. I don't know. Teacher pays? Yeah, I think the, the whole the whole thing needs to be torn down, that's what I would say. You know, what get it, get the government out of schools altogether because they've just stuffed it up. But, you know, people get upset about that. They don't like hearing that. I don't know why. Oh, there's also the the powerful teachers' union, which feels threatened by uh, homeschooling, and so they want the, the status mm -hmm. quo and to make sure that nothing ever changes and uh, the politicians are all petrified of teachers union running a campaign uh, against them. I mean, this is mm. why we've got, we had Gonski Mark one and now Gonski Mark two, because even the li uh, liberal, I suppose, um, you know, conservative small government party is petrified of, you know, what the teachers mm. union might do to them. Exactly. Yep. And they don't want to be seen to be attacking the holy cow that is, you know, education in Australia. Um, and it's not just academically that, that we're performing badly, it's kids as well. I think there's just like some huge amounts of anxiety and stuff in, in small children and the, the school day is longer than it's ever been. The academics start earlier than they ever did. And for what? What's it doing? What's it achieving? And, and as um, you mentioned, uh, uh, homeschooling children, they're often uh, you know, got much more initiative, much better uh, socialised uh, and m much more knowledgeable as well. So as, as you mentioned before, um, you can't just judge results on tests, you, you judge on, mm. on what type of adult the, the child eventually becomes. Exactly. I mean, who cares about the tests anyway? Universities are willing to take anyone these days, <laughs> as long as they pay their fees or rack up their hex debts. Um, I guess unless you, you're doing medicine or law or science or engineering, I don't think you need to go to uni and you don't need to worry about your test scores so much. Um, you know, and you don't have to go straight from year 12. I think year 12 and the, well, we used to call it the TEE here when I was doing it. I don't know what they call it now. But the university entrance scores in year 12 and all that pressure is just completely unnecessary. Um, there's so many other pathways into university now. It just seems like the whole setup is 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 pointless. Oh well, uh, higher education, that's a whole other topic which we yes. don't have time for today. So um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Nicola, for shedding some light on, on this topic and presenting homeschooling as a viable alternative. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was my pleasure. And uh, we referenced the Friedman Conference uh, presentation on homeschooling quite a, quite a bit in this show, so I'll leave a, a link to that in the description. And uh, hopefully I can bring you another uh, in focus show uh, in the near future. Uh, the usual reminders apply at the end of the show. Please, if you haven't, uh, sign up to the email list at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. Check out our upcoming events at theunshackled.net slash events. Please consider supporting The Unshackled by becoming a patron on Patreon, and you can also score some awesome rewards. Don't forget we have Unshackled merchandise for sale at theuprightmarket.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this show. You can do so on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or view the video version on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to keep visiting theunshackled.net on a regular basis for all the latest news. Thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time.